If you've ever tried to create a realistic AI image, you already know the most important step is picking the right model. But with new ones dropping almost every week, all promising the most photorealistic results, it's nearly impossible to know which one you should actually trust. I got tired of the hype and empty promises, so I spent hours testing every single photorealistic model out there, giving them the same prompts and settings to really see which ones live up to their claims. And from all that testing, I was able to narrow it down to the five models that stayed the most consistent, the most realistic, and the most true to the hype. So in this video, you'll discover the five finalists that actually deliver professional grade realism and the one tool that will be perfect for you. All the hidden features and little known best practices that unlock their full potential, as well as the one tool that lets you instantly switch between all of them without ever leaving a single dashboard. Let's get started. Now the tool that I'm gonna be using to access all of the image generators that we'll be reviewing today is called OpenArt. And I've left a link to it down in the description below so you can also access it and follow along with this video. When you first head into OpenArt, you'll see the homepage. On the left side, you want to click image and that will take you straight into the main image creation workflow. OpenArt has all of the models we'll be talking about today, which makes it incredibly easy to test them side by side. To switch to our first model, we'll go up to the top left corner, click the switch button and select our first image generator, Juggernaut. Now Juggernaut is a custom version of stable diffusion that's tuned specifically for photorealism. Some of Juggernaut's biggest strengths are its ability to create realistic skin details, cinematic lighting, and photos with that professional pop you normally only get from a high quality camera. And that's a huge advantage because one of the biggest struggles with AI image generation is avoiding that plastic or fake look in faces. Juggernaut handles that extremely well. Now for the testing process, I'll be using one universal prompt across all the models. This way, you'll be able to see exactly how each generator interprets the same request and where the differences really stand out. The first prompt goes like this. Ultra realistic photo of a young woman sitting at a cafe table near a window on a rainy afternoon. Natural daylight reflections on the glass. Cinematic depth of field. High detail in skin texture. Realistic lighting. Candid mood. There's an option in open art called auto enhance that automatically expands and polishes your prompt. But for this universal test, I left it turned off. That way, we're testing only the model's raw ability to handle the instructions as given. In terms of settings, Juggernaut offers you the option of image guidance, which means you can upload a reference photo if you want your output to be based on an existing image. That's a really powerful feature if you need consistency, like keeping the same face across multiple renders. Besides that, you mostly just control the aspect ratio. And for this first test, I went with a simple one-to-one -one square. So let's click create and see what we get. And honestly, the results are impressive right out of the gate. Juggernaut generates the images quickly and what it produces looks extremely realistic. To be completely honest with you, at first glance, it's hard to tell if this is a genuine high quality photograph taken in a cafe or something generated by AI. The reflections on the window glass look natural. The depth of field is handled beautifully and the subject is sharp while the background has that soft cinematic blur you'd expect from a real lens. That's a very strong first result. Now, to push Juggernaut outside its comfort zone a bit, I tried a second prompt. This one is more fantasy driven. Epic fantasy scene of a futuristic knight standing on a cliff glowing sword, neon clouds swirling in the sky, cinematic scale, ultra detailed textures. This type of scene isn't where Juggernaut typically shines since it's optimized for photorealism rather than concept art. But I wanted to see how it handled something more imaginative. For this prompt, I turned on auto enhance and clicked create. And the results were actually much better than expected. Even though this isn't Juggernaut's specialty, the outputs look like polished concept art from a video game or a movie storyboard. Both images it produced followed the prompt closely and they came out looking consistent with one another, which tells me Juggernaut has strong reliability in following detailed instructions. That's important because some models can give you wildly different results even when you keep the same prompt. So overall, I'd say Juggernaut is a very powerful tool if you're aiming for photorealistic images. It nails the subtle details that make a picture feel real and even in areas outside its specialty. It maintains a strong sense of accuracy and consistency. If you want cinematic portraits, lifestyle shots, or anything that needs to look like a professional photo, Juggernaut is easily one of the the best models for creating cinematic portraits. But if you want a photo that doesn't necessarily look exactly like it was snapped with a camera, but something that captures a more artistic mood with the soft hand-drawn quality of anime, that's exactly where Stable Diffusion 3.5 comes in. Now this model is designed more for artistic and stylized outputs rather than strict photorealism. What makes it unique is that it blends that hand-drawn feel with a touch of realism. So you still get images that look polished, but they carry a more creative, illustrative vibe. That's a huge strength if you're working on projects where you don't want your visuals to look like stock photography, or maybe you're going for mood pieces, thumbnails, or something that deliberately looks AI generated in a good way. So let's load it up inside
satellite open arc. To do that, I'll go to the model section, scroll down until I find stable diffusion and select it. Once that's done, I'll paste in the same universal prompt we've been using across all models. In terms of settings, it's pretty similar to what we had with Juggernaut. You don't have a ton of things to change here besides the aspect ratio. So I'll leave that simple, paste in the prompt and click create. And now let's check out the results. Looking at the first batch of images, you can immediately see the difference. These don't look fully real. They don't have the same photoreal sharpness and cinematic detail that Juggernaut gave us. Instead, they look a little more like a stylized render, almost painted or drawn. And honestly, that's not a downside because in certain situations, this look is exactly what you want. For example, if your goal is to create an image that doesn't have to pass as a real photograph, maybe you're working on a YouTube thumbnail, background art, or a concept sketch, then Stable Diffusion 3.5 gives you that perfect balance of realism and creativity. Now, where it really gets interesting is when we test it with a more creative prompt. For this one, I went with something more editorial. Editorial style fashion photo of a man in a tailored suit walking in Tokyo at night. Neon reflections, realistic shallow depth of field, magazine aesthetic. The idea here is to push the model into generating something that feels stylish and artistic, almost like it belongs in Vogue or a high-end magazine spread while still being AI driven. And the results were actually really impressive. Looking through the two images, each one came out clean with no major issues, no morphing, nothing that screams bad AI output. Instead, we got sharp, well-composed shots of exactly what we described. A man in a suit, walking in Tokyo at night, neon reflections. And the vibe feels consistent across all of them. That high fashion, editorial look. The coolest part is how versatile these images are. They don't feel like rigid stock photos. And that's where this model shines. I could easily see using stable diffusion for B-roll style assets in YouTube videos, background visuals for websites, or even just as a creative partner when brainstorming mood boards or concept art. So while it's not the go-to if you're chasing perfect photorealism, if your goal is creativity, stylization, and a touch of that drawn or designed feel, then stable diffusion is absolutely a model worth keeping in your toolkit. The next model on our lineup is called Open Art Photorealistic. This one is unique because it was created specifically for the Open Art platform itself. Now, one of the coolest things about Open Art is that it lets you create AI characters. These are essentially person-specific trained models, enabling the AI to retain facial features and ensure consistency across multiple outputs. So if you generate 10 or even 50 different photos of that same character, the AI doesn't drift, it remembers the details of the person. That's a massive advantage if you're building out an AI-generated human, a fictional character, or even a brand mascot, because it gives you that consistency you need to make the visuals feel reliable and believable. And this is exactly where open art photorealistic shines. It's designed to give you portraits that not only look like they were shot with a real camera, but that also stay consistent with your AI character over time. In other words, it's not overloaded with settings, sliders, or complicated features. Instead, it's focused on doing one thing really well, producing lifelike casual portraits that feel like genuine snapshots of real people. So as you can see, I've already switched to open art photorealistic inside open art. And for our first test, I'll go straight in with the universal prompt. Just like before, I'll paste it in here and keep the default settings. You'll notice that it's still pretty bare bones in terms of options, but that's intentional. This model wasn't built to be endlessly tweaked. It was built to give you strong realistic results immediately without needing much setup. Now let's take a look at the outputs. Honestly, these are very impressive. The images look incredibly realistic and to be completely upfront with you in terms of raw realism, meaning if I just wanted something that looked like a real photo someone might have casually taken of their friend at a cafe, I actually think open art photorealistic surpasses Juggernaut. Here's the key difference. Juggernaut gives you a polished, professional, cinematic look, almost like it was shot by a photographer with studio lighting and post-production editing. Open art photorealistic, on the other hand, gives you the opposite vibe. It feels more like a casual, everyday photo, the kind of image you'd see if a friend pulled out their phone and snapped a picture in the moment. Both are incredibly useful, but they serve very different creative needs. Now, to push the model a little bit further, I tried a second prompt. This one was more detailed. Close-up portrait of an elderly fisherman, wrinkled face, natural lighting, hyper detailed skin pores, shallow depth of field, Nikon look. This prompt is still within the strengths of the model, portraits, and realism, but it's more demanding because it calls for very fine details like pores, wrinkles, and specific lighting setups. And the results, again, very strong. The outputs look like genuine close-up portraits of a real elderly man. Honestly, it has the vibe of someone who just took a quick selfie or had their photo snapped by a relative. It feels natural, authentic, and unpolished in a good way. Now, I will say that the close-up framing was a little too close for my liking, so if I were to run this again, I'd probably avoid specifying close-up in the prompt. But aside from that, these results are spot on. Open art photorealistic is very useful if you're looking for images that feel genuinely real and casual, the kind of photos where someone could easily believe 
believe it was taken by a person, not AI. Then open art photorealistic is hands down one of the best options in today's lineup. It might not have the cinematic drama of Juggernaut, but for authenticity and consistency, this is the model to go with. Now, the next model in our lineup gives us a lot more to work with than just creating realistic portraits of people. It's called Flux Context Max, and what makes this model special is that it's very much an editing-focused AI model. Unlike the others we've tested so far, Flux isn't just about generating random images from text. Instead, it's designed to listen to your prompts and make incredibly real edits and upgrades to your images. So if you upload a photo and tell Flux to swap the t-shirt for a leather jacket or replace the text on the billboard, it makes that one change while keeping everything else identical. That level of precision is what makes it really powerful. Now, before we test the editing features, I want to start by running our universal prompt through it, just like we did with the other models, so we can compare the baseline quality. So I'll paste in the prompt, click create, and let's see what Flux Context Max gives us. Looking at the results, it's clear right away that these don't have the same cinematic feel as Juggernaut XL or the polished realism of open art photorealistic. The images are still very realistic, but they lean more toward a warm, almost filtered look. Like Flux applies a subtle aesthetic of its own. And honestly, that makes them pretty pleasing to look at. Now I did notice a few little quirks here and there where you can tell it's AI. Some textures or small details don't feel quite as natural as the outputs from Juggernaut or open art. But overall, the images are impressively realistic and visually appealing and for many use cases, they would be more than enough. Where Flux really stands out though, is in its editing. So let's test that. For this example, I want to use an image of a 2016 Ferrari 488. In the Omni reference field, I'll drop in the photo and for the prompt, I'll write something very specific. The car is on the Monza racing track in the rain. The color should be yellow with a lot of sponsor stickers all around it. Natural lighting, dark moody skies, rain. I'll also turn on auto enhance for this one, then click create. And the results are fantastic. It's still clearly the same Ferrari 488. The shape, proportions, and details of the car are preserved perfectly. But now it's bright yellow, covered in sponsor decals, sitting in the rain on what looks like a professional racing track. I can't say for certain if it's exactly Monza, but the scene absolutely captures the mood I asked for. Dark skies, wet asphalt, and the authentic racing vibe. And this is really where Flux shines. It might not always be the best choice if your goal is pure photorealism, for portraits, but if you need to take an existing asset and adapt it into new variations, Flux is incredibly powerful. Whether you're creating product mockups, marketing visuals, alternate ad concepts, or even assets for videos and websites, this model is built to give you reliable edits without destroying the original look of your image. If your workflow involves tweaking, improving, or transforming assets instead of just generating from scratch, Flux Context Max is hands down one of the most useful tools you can add to your lineup. And for our final model, we're testing out the big biggest brand in today's lineup. This one comes from Google and it's called Imogen 4. Now Imogen has been around for a while with versions 1, 2, and 3. And 4 is their newest release. And just like you'd expect from Google, this version is all about photorealism and clean, professional quality photos. Unlike Flux, it's not really made for heavy editing or tweaking existing images. It's more about instantly generating photos that look like they came from a high-end camera. So let's put it to the test. I've already selected Imogen 4 inside OpenArt, pasted in the universal prompt, and now I'll just click create. Look Looking at the results, these look really good. The realism here is insane. The subject looks alive, the setting feels real, and honestly, there's nothing that instantly gives away it's AI made. Everything from the lighting to the proportions to the background details feels like it was captured in a real photo. In terms of photorealism, this definitely sits up there with Juggernaut XL and OpenArt Photorealistic as one of the top performers in this lineup. But here's where it really sets itself apart in text rendering. As you probably know, text has always been a huge weakness for AI image generators. They'll often glitch letters scramble words, or produce something that looks like gibberish instead of usable text. Imogen 4 is supposed to fix this, so I put it to the test with two different prompts. The first was minimalist billboard in Times Square at night, glowing neon text that says testing AI models, photorealistic, wide cinematic angle. For this test, I will also increase the number of images generated. And the second was high fashion magazine cover with a female model, bold headline at the top, future vision, subheadline, the age of AI, minimalistic Vogue style. Now, looking at the billboard test first, I generated four different variations, and in every single one, the text came out perfectly clean. No misspellings, no distorted letters. The neon glow effect looked natural, and the words stayed consistent across the different outputs. It genuinely looks like the text was meticulously added in by a person in Photoshop, but where it really impressed me was the magazine cover. This is usually where most models break down, fonts get warped, words fall apart, or the styling looks off. But here, Imogen 4 absolutely nailed it. The headline and subheadline look just like those on a real magazine cover. 
The topography was elegant, italicized, and perfectly styled. It generally looks like something an art director designed, not something an AI spat out. And the model in the cover photo looked sharp and realistic too, matching the overall high fashion aesthetic. So overall, Imogen 4 shows why Google is taking this space seriously. It delivers top tier photorealism. And most impressively, it's one of the first models that can actually handle text in a way that feels professional and usable. If you've ever struggled with AI generated posters, ads, or magazine covers where the words came out broken, Imogen 4 fixes that. If you want images that are polished, professional, and text ready, this is the model to go with. And right now on the screen, you can see all of the universal results side by side. So you can see for yourself how each model handled the exact same test. And from that, we can clearly see the differences. Like if you want images that look casual, then open art photorealistic is the model to go for. But if you're chasing that professional cinematic shot, then Juggernaut XL is the one you'll want to use. On the other hand, if your goal is more creative, more stylized, stable diffusion just nails it. When it comes to editing assets, product shots, and ad mockups, Flux Context Max is unmatched. And finally, if you want super real photos with flawless lighting and professional quality text, then Google Imogen 4 is the model to go for. So now you know exactly which model is best for you and exactly how to use it. But most importantly, you now know the real winner of today. It's the tool we've been using this entire time, which is called OpenArt. OpenArt is the platform that lets you switch between all of these image generators from just a single dashboard. You don't ever need to jump between different sites, mess with separate styles, or waste time logging in and out of different platforms. Everything is centralized, everything is streamlined, and it's all inside OpenArt. And the best part is, whenever a new model drops, it's added to OpenArt quickly, with a tutorial ready to go. That way, you never have to figure out from scratch how to use it or wonder which prompts will get you the best results. You can generate across every major style, all in one place, and it doesn't even stop at images. With OpenArt, you can take those same outputs and instantly create videos, all without leaving the workflow. So if you want to start making pro-looking AI images without the hassle, try OpenArt using my link down in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.